Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Manti. Lyme disease in New Jersey is rising considerably, so much so that the CDC considers this ground zero. We will talk to a scientist from the CDC and New Jersey Congressman Chris Smith, who is heading up the fight against the disease. Also on today's show, lead in the drinking water in New Jersey has become a big problem. We'll tell you how one town is dealing with it. And did you know there's only one township in the country with the word flag in its name? And it's right here in New Jersey. We'll take you there. And now our interview with Republican Congressman Chris Smith from the 4th District in New Jersey. I know there's been a sharp increase in Lyme disease in New Jersey and across the country, but in New Jersey, the numbers have been startling. Why? Well, it's been exploding. Um, there's no natural predator to it. Um, and it just keeps increasing, increasing. The estimates now of people who are sick from Lyme disease is now upwards of $400,000, the 400,000 uh, new cases per year. Um, that is, and half of those, more than half, are children. So there's a, an epidemic of disease, and it's a very serious disease. If caught early, like within days, there's a good chance that the antibiotics, mostly doxycycline, will work. Uh, but most people don't catch it early, it becomes chronic. Uh, it migrates throughout the system, including into the brain, and people get sick, and they don't know why they have brain fog and all these other terrible, terrible symptoms. It's because this tiny bug called the spirochete uh, is loose within their entire system. And I know people that have fought residual effect for years yes. and years and years, and sometimes didn't even know what the problem was, exactly. and it was diagnosed as Lyme disease a, a lot later. What can the federal government do? Well, it can do a lot. You know, since uh, 1998, when I first introduced my first of a bill that I did every single Congress, saying that we need, needed a national advisory committee to put people who are Lyme literate right next to people who are in denial uh, and let them work out what the science is, what the risk is to Americans, and uh, we finally got it. Uh, the 21st Century Cures Act, we put a provision in into that act for this working group. They issued their first report in 2018, and it is a blockbuster. It is the pivot, because they have affirmed everything I and so many others have been saying, Pat Smith, who you know is the head of Lyme Disease Association, have been saying, not for years, but for decades, and has been dismissed out of hand by some of the top people at the CDC and NIH. So there's been a transformation about the lethality and the morbidity, the horrible sickness that becomes unleashed in somebody's system uh, when they are bit by a, 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 you know, a deer tick or a lone star or many others. You know, unfortunately, there's now uh, all kinds of co-inhabiting diseases inside the ticks. So you have not just Lyme, and 82% of all the cases are Lyme, but also other things that are causing that patient to be absolutely miserable and sick, and some even die. And from what I understand, there's even, there's more species of ticks now, that yes. they're coming yeah. over, they're yeah. being imported, and they're bringing not only Lyme disease, but other diseases as well. There's no doubt about it that there are at least 18 pathogens that the CDC has recognized, but as they point out, researchers are constantly finding new because they are, you know, they're just morphing into other things. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost like any other disease. Uh, you know, it finds a way of defending itself and then getting worse. Uh, we see it with tuberculosis, we see it with drug resistance to tuberculosis. Uh, even with HIV AIDS, it was a real problem with how often will this morph into something else. Well, it's happening with Lyme disease as well. But the devastation to families is incredible. My own daughter got it. Can, can we do something? Everybody says that uh, we've been talking about this for a while sure. with, with some experts, including Pat, and, and they, everybody seems to say it's because there's more ticks. That's why there's more Lyme mm -hmm. disease. There's, it's just simply there's more ticks. Can we do something to, to reduce the deer population? Isn't that part of the well, solution? It, it, Larry, it's a good question because it's deer, but it's also virtually every type of rodent, including mice, who get infected, uh, and then they drop the ticks who lodge onto them, and they often are close to our homes. Uh, deer are too, if they're eating your flowers. Or, or, and mice can bring uh, it in your homes. And mice can actually bring it in your homes, but certainly in proximity. So you go out and you walk in the grass, uh, you don't do a deer ch uh, a check later, uh, and next thing you know, two days later, you're wondering, oh my God, what's this bullseye? Uh, what happened here? And uh, the bullseye doesn't always manifest 
and that becomes even more dangerous because then they miss well, it. You should get it checked it out. You should always immediately. check it out. Uh, so that's, that's not the solution. Uh, I understand you're talking about increasing funding to the CDC yes, yes. for this problem. I am. D do you expect that to pass easily? I hope, uh, but frankly, I've been in Congress long enough to know, uh, just like I've worked on this since 1998, and it wasn't until three years ago that we got it. As I will tell people at the town meeting, uh, we almost lost it in the U.S. Senate. There's a group called the Infectious Disease Society of America. They make up the definitions for diseases. Every person that was on the panel that decides what constitutes uh, Lyme disease, because they say Lyme that's chronic does not exist, uh, had a conflict of interest. It was so bad that the former Attorney General of Connecticut, Blumenthal, who's now a, a U.S. Senator, he put some of his people on it and they found that everyone had made conflicts of interest. So much so that he could have prosecuted. Now, they said, oh, we'll fix that. Well, they haven't. So we still have uh, the flatter society people saying that chronic Lyme doesn't exist. They trivialize. Even this report says that a lot of the patients are discriminated against when they seek care or they go to their, their place oh, of business. Oh, oh, what's the conflict of interest with pharmaceutical industry? Uh, pharmaceuticals, but also with uh, health insurance corporations, patents that they might own on other things. So, but every one of them. I mean, it wasn't not. like, I mean, it, it, we've seen this before with revolving doors, you know, in, in the research community, but there's nothing. So it I, sounds like you're getting some headwind. That's we what are you think? definitely getting headwind. And the people who are on this, including Dr. Beard, who, you know, is we'll be talking the top to person. Yeah. He was on this, this, this report, this uh, working group. They delved into everything. They, they really left no stone unturned. They have a whole series of recommendations uh, that the federal government and anyone who is concerned can follow. Uh, it starts at home with each and every one of us making sure, particularly if you're in proximity to grass or a woodlands area, that you take serious precautions. Right, but let me, let me go back to the funding and your sure, bill. Sure, sure. Because I know there used to be a vaccine. There, yes. there was a vaccine for yes. Lyme disease, yes. and because of, of some media stories about the effects of it, uh, and okay. also uh, because it just, the demand wasn't there, it, it, it went, went away. Right. It, it went away. And, but it was effective, and it was proved to be safe. Would increased funding make that available well, again? Great question again. But they are, I know that the researchers are looking at you know, using Lyme ricks, uh, which is used in our dogs and pets today. Um, with with some improvements there were some allegations that some adverse reporting arthritis problems, arthritis was, yeah, was, was one pain. Of them. and they're looking to see if they can overcome that but you also made the good point larry a lot of people didn't use it right. and so because we still have had this this well it's really not as bad as as they're saying it is because there's been a very strong counterforce to all of this for decades trivializing Lyme disease, treating Lyme patients as if, oh, they just need some Prozac. I don't get the end game on that. What, what, is, what does the pharmaceutical industry get out of that? Well, the, the health insurance industry gets someone who may require fifty or $60,000 or more uh, with a very robust two-year regimen uh, to get that spirochete out of their system. Uh, instead, they say, you know, months worth of doxycycline and you're home free. And after that, you're dealing with symptoms uh, that are just, you know, what? What's causing the symptoms? We know what's causing the symptoms. You didn't kill it. And the evidence clearly suggests, I mean, with, with exclamation points, that if you have chronic Lyme, you need a Lyme literate doctor who knows that you need to go after this almost with cocktails of different drugs and, and antibiotics, similar to what we do with ARVs and HIV AIDS. Uh, you know, one drug just didn't do it all. Uh, for a long time. It sounds like it'd be good if the vaccine came back. That would, that would that be good. Would... And added to that, Larry, we do spend, in terms of, the, and, and the, again, the report pointed this out, uh, when, uh, on the number of surveilled cases, how many cases are there? Nothing gets less money for a disease. Nothing. Name any disease, any disability, than Lyme and tick-borne disease. Yeah, it's one of the most the fastest growing infectious and, diseases in the country yeah, right now. Exactly because it hasn't been treated well. Sir, thank Larry, you very thank you much. So much. I appreciate it. Good luck at the town hall. We've talked about Dr. Beard from the CDC. He is the preeminent expert when it comes to Lyme disease. We will talk to him when Jersey Matters continues.